Watch this video if you want to find out whether social media is ruining your relationship and how to fix it. For the best relationship advice, make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification to be notified every time I upload a video. My name is Dana and I own a website called Better Topics that is dedicated to helping couples experience more love, joy and connection. Before we get into how social media can actually ruin your relationship, let's actually settle this dispute. Is social media bad? Well, what is social media? Social media is, at the end of the day, a tool. And it can be bad or good depending on how it is actually used. Therefore, social media is as good or as bad as the people who are using it. Therefore, it can be good and promote very positive things, you know, a lot of businesses are run now on social media. A lot of awareness regarding a lot of movements around the world are on social media and, you know, it, it generally helps bring people together. And the main aim when social media platforms were created was to actually bring people together, which is great, especially if you think about how much people are traveling these days and relocating very, very often. Therefore, it can be quite good, especially in keeping in touch with friends, family, or even just staying up to date with news. However, it can also be quite destructive as well, if misused. And how do we know this? Well, we can see all sorts of advertising and false news as well. Or we can also see relationships falling apart because of social media. And this can be anything from why has a person posted a certain thing, or the fact that another person started following or interacting with someone else who they shouldn't have. Therefore, social media in itself, it's not as bad. It really depends on how it is used and why. Now let's dive into a few key reasons why I think social media can be bad. First of all, social media is a platform where partners can actually reconnect with former partners or maybe find new ones and it brings temptation into the equation as well now if you think about it this as well can be positive or negative depends how you look at it at the end of the day is if someone wants to cheat they will cheat regardless whether they have access to social media or not if someone wants to cheat they can cheat as we say by holding your hands as well meaning you might even have their passwords to social media accounts and everything or you might even share a social media account and you still end up your partner cheating on you therefore you see there is an underlying problem that you have to look at and it's not actually social media's fault therefore if you find a partner who actually started cheating on social media because you know they found someone else or maybe they just cannot settle in a monogamous relationship at the end of the day, you can look this from a positive way, which means you can find this out in few months rather than in few years. If you think about it, in olden times, people still cheated. Maybe not as often as now because they didn't have as many opportunities, but they still done it once they found a partner who to do it with. Whereas with social media, because we are so connected and the opportunities are very varied right now, it is easier for them to do it and faster. Therefore, instead of spending 20 years with a person that eventually ends up cheating because they just want to, they might do it in few months down the line. Therefore, you might spend few months, maybe a year, you know, in a relationship with this wrong person rather than spending 20 and then finding out what's happening. Now, I'm not saying that you should just let loose your partner online and then do whatever they want just to watch them like you're a predator and they're the prey and just to see when they do the uh, wrong move. That's not what I'm saying. But you see, even if partners cheat online and they find their partners online, it can be a good thing. It can actually reduce the time you invest in this person because, you know, at the end of the day, it is most likely lost time if you're not staying in a long-term relationship with them. Now, you can still have healthy boundaries and then discuss with your partner what you feel a healthy boundary would be and what you're okay with them doing on social media and what you're not okay with them doing. 
For example, if my husband likes someone else's picture, I might look at who it was. But this depends on each relationship and it depends on you actually having this discussion with your partner and setting clear examples and boundaries of what you find acceptable of them doing online. For example, if my husband likes a picture online, that is okay. I mean, they've just liked it. But if he would engage with that person and try to talk to them and take it further, now that would be a problem. And at the end of the day, I look at social media most of my days as well and then I tend to see a lot of people better looking, worse looking, it doesn't really matter and I sometimes like pictures as well so it can be you know looked at this problem from the other side as well but again he understands that if I see someone who you know looks good, they dress well, I will like their picture but that's where I stop. Therefore we both know where our limit is and where we draw the line. And obviously we are not crossing that line unless we want to get in trouble with our partner. Now the second reason why I think social media can be bad is because you tend to spend more time on social media than working on your relationship and therefore with your partner. I mean, if you keep posting all day about your relationship, when do you actually have time to be in your relationship and work on your relationship together with your partner. Because although it, although I keep saying working on the relationship, it can actually be quite fun. You know, this means anything from having adventures together, spending time together, doing some hobbies together or crafts or anything else that, you know, makes both of you enjoy your time spent together and building the actual relationship and the connection. At the end of the day, great relationships don't just appear by magic. They're not just found and then that's it, you have it. Great relationships are built and they take time and a certain degree of effort as well. If you truly want a great relationship, why not just take the time and invest it in creating the perfect relationship you want to have rather than just posting about having one? I mean, who are you fooling at the end of the day? Because if you just post about your relationship, and you know you want to show other people that you're happy when in real life you're not basically you're just fooling yourself because other people out there they actually care a lot less than you would think about your relationship and also the happiness that comes from actually having a great relationship is far more better and long-standing compared to the easy fading happiness that comes from getting a certain number of likes or comments to your perfect couple picture. Therefore, I encourage you to spend less time on taking pictures and videos about your relationship and your partner and spend more time actually building a great relationship with them. Now, a third reason why I think social media can be bad and destructive of your relationship is the fact that you tend to compare yourself with other couples that you see on social media. As many times it seems that other couples are happier and their relationship is healthier and fuller and full of adventures, whereas that might not be the case. You actually don't know what's going on in their relationship. Also, if you would be able to look deeper into their relationship, you might not even want to mirror that in your relationship because at the end of the day, we are different people and we like different things. Also, most people just tend to post the happy moments. I personally think this is rooted to past traditions where people used to take photos on the old type cameras that had a limited number of pictures that they could take because they had certain inserts called films. If you don't know what these are, ask your parents or your grandparents, they might still know what those are. So all type cameras, they used to have these films that went into them and they had a certain number of pictures that you could take before you send that off for the pictures to be developed. And then you would get the pictures back and then obviously you would look at them. So because in those times, you know, the number of shots they got were quite limited, people actually tended to prefer to always take pictures of the happy moments and very important moments. And I think this tradition of always trying to be happy and smiley in pictures has been passed on from generation to generation. Although in these times you can take thousands of pictures and you know, you still have some memory left on your phone. And as I said, many people post about their relationship as they are always happy, but they might not be. Again, we don't know what's happening behind the camera. 
and if you think about it when do they even have time to be happy because as i mentioned a great relationship takes work when do they actually have time to work on their relationship if they're too busy craving likes and comments to their pictures i'm not saying you should not post at all about your relationship i'm saying you should do it in a more healthy way and you should have some healthy boundaries on how to do it when is best time to post and how much of it let me know what you think of these reasons so far and comment a yes in the comments below if you're more committed to working on your relationship rather than just posting it on social media now if you want to improve your relationship and don't let social media become a tool that will just destroy it this is what you need to do step number one post about your relationship but not too much now I know considering what I've said earlier this might come like a contradiction but actually hear me out it is good to post about your relationship by not doing so by keeping your relationship secret your partner might actually get the wrong message they might understand through this that you want to keep them hidden from everyone else and maybe keeping your options open therefore it is okay to post on social media that you are in a relationship but don't overdo it unless you both agree to not post at all on your social media and you're both okay with this i would suggest you post a picture once in a while um, but again try not to go to the other extreme where you constantly are posting pictures rather than working and enjoying your relationship generally couples who post less on social media they don't feel they need anyone else's approval about the fact that they are actually having a good time or about the fact that they are actually in love with this person they are in a relationship with for example for me and my husband to keep it um, at a healthy level we actually post pictures mostly me to be honest on social media about where we travel and what have we been up to lately mostly to keep in touch with family because we are living very far from them and it's quite easy with one picture posted to let so many other people know you know we've been doing this and then still catch up with them over the phone or when we go to visit but we are trying to keep this at a very healthy level and most times we will actually send them pictures in private messaging rather than just posting them out on Facebook. The second step you can do not to let social media ruin your relationship is to start spending less time on it. Now, unless you work in social media and you have to be constantly on it, I would suggest you limit your time that you, you use certain applications. These days, most of them actually have a cut off timer if you like that you can set up for an hour two hours three hours a day limit and then once you hit that time it you will have a pop-up notification where it tells you your time is up and you should basically do something else and trust me once you start using this app it is a big eye-opener because most people don't realize how much time they're spending daily on social media just scrolling away and just looking at random cat pictures Whereas once you become aware of all this time that you invest in social media to the detriment of your relationship, it will make more sense for you why is it that you're not as happy and fulfilled in your relationship. Also, once you realize how many hours you spend, you can cut those down to a healthy level and start using those hours that you are left with on working on your relationship and spending time with your partner. Unless you are far from your partner and you need to actually use um, a similar tool to keep in touch with them, but then again, you would focus on your partner rather than what's happening on social media. The third step you can do to not let social media ruin your relationship is to make a conscious effort and stop comparing yourself to other couples. As I said, each person is different and each couple has a different dynamic. If you think about it, there are certain things that, you know, you accept in your relationship that other people might not. And also, if you would have a close insight into how other couples are together, you know, when they're just the two of them and how they're interacting with each other, you might not accept a lot of things that they accept. And that is okay we all have different thresholds we all have different likes and dislikes we all have different experiences of the past that you know might trigger cer certain things in us or not so that is quite okay and normal it is up to you to define what you accept and not in your relationship and don't base that on what other people are doing in their relationship 
purely because you might actually not even enjoy it. For example, you might not accept to be spoken to in a certain way using a certain language, whereas other people find no fault in that. They think it's normal and that's okay for them. Again, it might not be okay for you. Therefore, why should you struggle and accept things in your relationship just because you're comparing yourself and because your relationship is different than others? It is normal for your relationship to be different than others because you are two different people at the end of the day. Also, your relationship with this partner that you have now is in a certain way. If you change your partner down the line and you will have a different relationship with someone else, that to you, it will be quite different because it is at least one different person involved in it. And even if you have one long-term relationship, the way you are at the beginning and the things you accept and don't accept at the beginning and how you behave with each other are in a certain way. Down the line, 10 years, 15 years later, that dynamic changes. And that, again, is okay. It depends on how you want it to change and how you can actually direct it towards the changes that you want to make. Again, it depends on what you prefer and your partner prefers as well. Therefore, there's not much point into comparing yourself with other couples. They have a different road in their life. Now, of course, you can still get inspired by other couples and try to work on your relationship to improve it. But please keep in mind that, you know, that couple that is smiling and always happy in pictures, they might not be that happy in real life. Again, please don't take it to the other extreme. I'm not saying that you should air your dirty laundry on social media. That's not what I'm saying and it's not healthy for your relationship either. But that is a topic for a different discussion because that will just bring more conflict into your relationship, which obviously it's not something desirable. Therefore, social media itself is as good or as bad as the people who are using it. And it all depends on the intention on how it is to be used and depending on us on how much we are willing to share. Again, my last suggestion is to cut down on the hours you're using social media and use that time to actually improve your relationship in real life. Let me know in the comments below what are your thoughts about social media and relationships. If you want to join a community of like-minded people, make sure to join our Facebook group and the link for this I will leave in the description box below. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe and feel free to share it with your friends.